Where? Ava Grace. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Where's everybody? Good morning. I don't hear everybody. Good morning. Morning. Are you still all lazy? Are we lazy this morning? Good morning, everybody. Oh, there is Ava Grace. Good morning, Ava. She said good morning. Okay, it's August 17, 2020. It's a Monday again in the Kleochko household. And uh, it is very hot. We are going to be uh, experiencing above 100 degree weather here in uh, the Central Valley of California. So those of you out there, uh, I suppose you're aware already if you haven't yet felt how hot it is outside. <laughs> uh, just hydrate, hydrate a lot and um, don't forget, okay? Put, put, put your water drinking habit uh, on a timer as I do, put it on the phone. Every hour it rings to remind me, take water. Okay, very good. So today the gospel comes from St. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. Here goes. It's a very interesting uh, gospel for today. Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? So there was this rich young man. This is the, the story of the rich young man who went to Jesus. And he expressed a desire to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so he asks our Lord, well, what, what, what can I do? What can I do? He answered him, why do you ask me? about the good. There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Right? That's the most basic requirement. Right? Keep the commandments. He asked him, which ones? Maybe he's trying to, you know, play a smart uh, Alec. <laughs> which ones? Jesus replied, Oh, you know, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. <coughs> oh, <coughs> excuse me. Honor your father and your mother. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then the young man said to him, All these I have observed. What do I still lack? So he was being very honest. With, with our Lord. He must be a very good man, right? Must be a very good young man. I have kept all these commandments. So what else is there for me to do? Now Jesus told him, Oh, okay. You've been a good boy, huh? Well, let's see. What else can you do? Jesus says, If you wish to be perfect, Go sell what you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come, follow me. When the young man heard that, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Dang! What a missed opportunity, right? He was already living all the commandments. He was trying to be a good young man. But it was as though he was hit from left field with, 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 with a jab that caught him unawares about, oops, come on, I got to give up all my wealth? Just to be an apostle? Just to follow you? It's not enough to be following all the commandments? I thought that was the most important thing. Well, yeah, that's right. That's the most important thing. right? But our Lord was trying to bring up this man to a higher level of discipleship, of following Christ. He says... If you wish to be perfect, perfect, 
not just if you just want to be compliant. <laughs> if you want to be compliant, obey the rules. But if you want to be perfect, well, there's something more. And that is, there's something about you that you need to uh, 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 push yourself in. There's something about you that you need to challenge yourself in. And what is that? It is related to the way you deal with your possessions. Let's, not, let's make no mistake about this. Our Lord is not saying it's bad to have possessions. Our Lord is not saying uh, money is, is evil. Okay? Uh, by the way, let me just correct that. Okay? Money is not the root of all evil, as many people say. No, it's not that. Money is an instrument of doing plenty of good. Okay? But the love for money is the root of all evil. That's the right way to understand that. The love for money. Why is the love, and not just the money, but the love for money, the root of all evil? I mean, of course, just, we are just talking here of wealth, of material wealth and money, right? The, the, the reason for, for that is because it is a disordered love for material things. Okay? Because of that disordered love, we tend to put our trust in in money, in the ability to do things because we have the war with all to do them. Okay? Instead of putting our trust and dependence on the providence of God. So that is what's wrong about the way people use their wealth. Okay? Instead of instead of depending on the on the providence of God as our Father, a lot of people tend to forget about God's providence, tend to forget about relying on God, and they rely solely on their riches, they rely solely on their wealth, they rely solely on their own means to achieve their ends, or to achieve the objectives that they had uh, uh, projected for themselves. So that's what's wrong about money. But, Besides that, there's something else that is, um, well, not besides that, but accompanying that love for money is really the, the defect, the defect or the vice, which is called attachment to material things. The attachment, love. Love there is about attachment. You see, when you love something or someone, you tend to be very attached to that person, right? You tend to always want to be with that person. You always want to have these things close to you when you're attached to them. Well, that is what's wrong about uh, being rich. Okay? It is not the money. It is not the possession. It is the attachment to these riches that make, that make money... <clears throat> And possessions and material wealth, <clears throat> excuse me, a temptation to, to sin and a temptation not to follow our Lord. And that was the problem of this young man. Imagine he was already following all the commandments. So he was a good person, right? But his biggest obstacle was his attachment to his wealth. He could not detach himself from his riches, from his wealth, from his money, from his possessions. And that became his biggest obstacle. So let us remember, there's, it, it is not wrong to make plenty of money. In fact, having wealth is just an indication of, well, maybe how hard we work, right? Unless you inherited your money. But uh, for, for most people, uh, material possessions is an indication of how hard they have worked for that money. And that's a good thing. See? Industry, diligence at work is a virtue which could be elevated 
to a, a sanctifying uh, situation. Uh, we have to sanctify our everyday work and, and becoming rich because of our work, honest work, therefore honest money is earned from honest work. If, if that is a consequence, then that is a very good indication. But the question to ask is, how do we, what is our attitude towards our money? How do we relate to money? How do we relate to these possessions? Are we using them to, to bring good to other people? Or are we using them to destroy other people? And let me just put that in perspective. See, in today's, in today's uh, world, uh, especially in today's news that we gather from today's uh, events, this pandemic, we, we are, uh, we are uh, witnessing how a lot of people, billionaires with plenty of money, are using their money for the wrong ends, are using their money to destroy America, are using their money to destroy people by donating to Planned Parenthood and supporting abortion clinics and, 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 and funneling their money into, into government agencies that, uh, and government, corrupt government officials that are destroying humanity and are destroying society, are destroying our country. And that's happening all over the world. But here in America, it is a very, very obvious reality. A lot of people with a lot of money are channeling their money to do plenty of harm to people instead of doing good. Now, so as I said, money is not the problem. It is our attachment. See, it is our attachment. It is not being rich that is a problem. It is the attachment to riches that is a problem. And therefore, we have to learn detachment. We have to learn detachment. Now, well, you kids, you don't have billions yet to use, right? <laughs> you still need to earn them. But you know what? And, and, and those of you who have children at home, um, we can teach our own children how to live detachment at home, even if they don't have uh, their, their own uh, well-earned money to, to spend on themselves yet. And, and to, to help other people. Uh, but we can teach them uh, some very concrete ways of how they can learn to live detachment now so that when they grow up and they are working and they start working, they start earning their money, they, they will learn how to be detached because it's not only about money, by the way, it's about many other possessions. Okay? So let's give a rundown of what things we can do. By the way, this is not only for children, even us, Adults uh, can practice this very clearly. Okay? Uh, so let's just start from there. Those who earn money already, what is one big way by which we can be detached from our wealth and exhibit detachment? First thing I could think of is tithing. Right? Tithing. We give a portion of our hard-earned money to supporting charitable causes from from the church, giving giving part of that money to the church, donating it to uh, to some charitable causes. There are plenty around us that we could channel our uh, resources to. Okay, so tithing is is one very good way. Okay, uh, and here are the here are the rest of my recommendations. Number one, never consider anything indispensable. You can always live without the things you have. Okay? Let us never think, oh, this is so precious to me, I cannot live without it. Oh, I cannot live without a car. You know, how do you expect me to, uh, to commute to work if I don't have a BMW? <laughs> uh, uh oh, what's Ava complaining about? You too can live without many things that you have now, Ava. You were born naked with nothing. You're going to the grave with nothing. You can't bring your riches to the grave. So, yes. So, therefore, everything is a throwaway. Let's keep that in mind. Okay? Everything is dispensable. Don't ever consider anything in your life as so indispensable you can't live without it. Okay? 
Number two, be generous in sharing what you have. So we already said, tithing would be one of them. But there are many other things you can be generous about. And you can, you can uh, uh, part with in a big way. There's so many things you can share. Okay? You can share that you don't need to just keep for yourselves. Um, and, 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 well, there, there are many of these things you can think about. Just make a, make a list, right? What things can you share among yourselves? Okay? Or your favorite pencil or your notebook. Or your computer. Well, no. In the first place, everything you have was given to you. <laughs> okay? Everything you have was given to you. Primarily by God. Secondly, by your parents. Thirdly, by uh, whoever is your benefactor. Right? Even your work, uh, e even the things that you, that you earn at work are, are many times a benefit. Yeah, it is a reward. It's a benefit. So, never be stingy with things that you own. Share, share, share. Okay? That's one very good way to be detached from your possessions. Third, limit what you have. Limit what you have. Put a real, concrete limit to what you have. And limiting what you have can be, you know, in, 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 in anything that you do. I mean, do you really need the latest Mercedes-Benz or, 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 or a BMW to bring you from home to work every day? Do you really need that? Mama. Oh, Ava says maybe not, right? <laughs> do you really need... Three closet full of, of, uh, of clothes. Do you really need seven racks of shoes? I mean, come to think of it. Do you really need all of these things that you accumulate? Many times, many times things are superfluous. So never have anything superfluous in your life. <clears throat> Stick to what's basic. Stick to what is functional. Stick to those things that are going to contribute to your development, to, to, to the attainment of certain ends that, you know, yeah, sometimes you need to project an image. Sometimes you need to, to live up to your, uh, to your status in life. Yeah, I get that. But you know what? A lot of people exaggerate that too. A lot of people exaggerate that. And by the way, those material things are not even an indication of your success. Okay? Some people think that, oh, I need to drive a BMW so that, uh, you know, my neighbors will think, oh, I'm very successful. And, uh, you know, people at work, when they see me park that car in, in the parking lot, they will think, oh, wow, you know, this guy is very successful, right? Oh, amazing, must be very rich. <laughs> A lot of those things are for show. And, and they really don't mean anything. They, they're not going to contribute to your, to your development. They're not going to contribute to your sanctity. In fact, they are going to be an obstacle. Because you are putting, you're putting on a, 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 a farce. You are putting on some pretensions. You are, you are using things uh, uh, in a very unnecessary way. So have what you need. Okay? In fact, here in our own household, let, let me just tell you this. We have a rule every January that we go through our closets. And we, we count. We have a limit of a dozen items of clothing. For every category of clothing, the limit is a dozen. That's it. We do that every January. Because, you know, all throughout the year, there are plenty of gifts, uh, you know, uh, plenty of birthday gifts or plenty of, I don't know what, hand-me-downs even. Hey, you know, we accept plenty of hand-me-downs. <laughs> and people love to give us things just because they think we have seven children. Oh, they must need things. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, every January, we go through a sorting uh, 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 time here in the house and we 
we sort things out. We only keep the things that we think we need and the things we like to use for the year. And we get rid of a lot of things. Well, actually, we donate them, you know, and, uh, well, we still, have, we still have a lot of them in the garage. But anyway, uh, limit what you possess. Put limits on yourselves, you know. Uh, it's not like just because you have space, you need to fill it in. No. Very wrong. Okay, next. Choose the worst for yourself. Choose the worst for yourself. All the time. You know, this is a very good, a very good habit. Instead of always keeping an eye at, oh, what is going to be the best for me? What about asking yourself, well, which of these options are the worst? I'm going to have that. I'm going to give the best to my brothers, to my sisters. I'm going to choose the worst for myself. Okay? You're detaching. You're detaching yourself from... You're detaching yourself from what is possibly the best that you can obtain for yourself. Right? And, and, and you're reserving the best for others to have instead of yourself. You know, that way, that way you are, you're being detached. You're really, you're, and, and, and so if you have the good fortune of receiving something very good, right? But since you already have the habit of being detached from the best of things, then you will learn to know how to handle that good thing, that good fortune that you just received. Okay? You're going you're gonna to use it with plenty of gratitude, with plenty of appreciation, and at the same time, with plenty of detachment. That you can let go of it. You can let go of it if you have to. See? So... Choose the worst for yourself. Look, and, and look, in the house, we can, do this, we can do this very easily. For example, if you have a favorite seat in the house, in the living room, in the family room, once in a while you can give it up and say, I'll choose the worst for myself. I like, I'll stay on the floor instead of on that favorite spot on the couch. If you have a favorite study, uh, study place in the house, because we homeschool, maybe today I'll give up that favorite corner and, and I'll stay in the worst place. What is the worst place today? <laughs> I'll stay there. Yeah. Giving up your comfort. Giving up your comfort. Oh, you know, uh, today, ah, oh, very, very nice situation. So this week is going to be very hot. Oh, I'm going to stay beside the air conditioner. I'm going to put a fan focused on me ah, because I don't like to be hot. Ah. <laughs> Can we mortify ourselves with those comfortable things? Can we give up some comfort this week or a few days to be detached even from comfort? See, that's very important. By the way, you see, living a comfortable life is an indication of wealth because only people who have the means to be comfortable are comfortable, right? Many other people don't have the means to be comfortable. So, how about we try to live under those circumstances once in a while of depriving ourselves of comfort so that we realize that this comfort that a lot of people are having in this world because they simply don't have the means to be comfortable. See? So, we can detach ourselves even from comfort. We can detach ourselves even from the food we eat, right? And you've heard me say this many times. Eat more of what you do not like and eat less of what you like, right? You don't like vegetables? Eat more vegetables. You don't like beans? Eat more beans. You like chicken? Eat less of chicken. Right? You like... This kind of dessert, eat less of the kind of dessert. See? Detachment, detachment, detachment. That is the way we can uh, live up to the standard of perfection that our Lord has called this young man to live. And he is calling each and every one of us today to be mindful of detachment. The enemy is not wealth. It is not riches. The enemy is our own attachment.
to the many bountiful good things that God has allowed us to use in order to bring out something good in this world. You see, remember, our Lord gave us this world to manage. When he told us in Genesis, right? Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle and all the animals that crawl on the earth. The Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to till and keep it. God gave us this world to manage, to, to, to make it productive, to make it yield plenty of fruit so that we can do more good. It is not so that we will be selfish. It is not so that we keep these things for ourselves alone. It is not so that we just enjoy it for our own comfort. It is so that we can do a lot of good, not only for ourselves, but for other people. And in that way, we can possess heaven. We can possess heaven. We will have treasure in heaven. Okay, that is it for us, folks. Have a good morning, everybody. Have a good day ahead of you and a good week. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye. Bye. Ava wants to say bye. Come. Come here, Ava. <laughs> say bye. There. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Kiss, Papa. Mwah! Very good. Bye-bye.